By the early 50s, segregation was frayed by the war and torn in spots where the court had acted. The white primary was outlawed. Housing covenants outlawed. Some graduate and law schools were forced to admit blacks. But the court was aware that the big fight was still to come. The schools, K through 12, white children and black in the same classroom. Southerners assumed that if grade school kids uh, were in a desegregated setting, they'd get to know each other and they'd get to date each other and then they'd marry each other. And uh, that was the strongest taboo that the South held. Led by Thurgood Marshall and other young lawyers like Robert Carter, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund was running or aiding cases all over the country. The court picked five and consolidated them into one set of arguments, forever known as Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. On May 17, 1954, there were signs. Some of the justices' wives showed up. Some clerks were tipped off. Then reporters rushed the courtroom. Warren starts off in a bland manner and you can't tell for a while as he's delivering the opinion what the outcome is going to be. And then he comes to the key line and he says, and we unanimously hold that separate but equal has no place in the Constitution. And it was just electric in the courtroom when he said unanimous. And in practice, Plessy v. Ferguson itself is no more. The era of Jim Crow, constitutionally speaking, is over. This was precisely what we urged them, almost in that language. So it was gratifying to have the, the opinion come down almost in the language of the argument that we made to them. 